Kinder bar. Oh. Oh, I thought it was a cigarette. I was like, the fuck? You're, you're getting dessert and you pulled out a cigarette. I'm like, I'm so confused. Are you French now? Are you French? <laughs> they smoke cigarettes for dessert? Yes. Yeah. And lunch Wait, and dinner real? and breakfast. And... Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture. Shut up, guys! I tried to get you show. Otaku culture related. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me Sid by. And joining me tonight, I have two absolute assholes. We have our Asshole. poster extraordinaire, Natai. It's good to be here with you, Alex. Mm. I can tell. And our czar of source material, John. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Listen, I've gotten into a rhythm of doing the intro. Stop making fun of me. Do you want to do it? Do no you want to do it? Fun. We're just having a we're just having a we're laugh. We're just vibing. We're just vibing, yeah. bro. We're just vibing. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, before we actually get into what we're doing tonight, I do want to remind everyone: uh, if you like what you see here tonight, please do uh, consider giving us a like, comment below. Uh, if you have something to say about what we do talk about here tonight, and subscribe if you do want to see more. We are on a mission to get uh, our YouTube channel monetized this year, and I think we're going to do it. We're, we're not that far off, honestly. That's right. We're getting big in the YouTube sphere. <laughs> Thank you guys for everything. Yes. Anyway, uh, what are we going to be doing tonight? Well... Uh, the four of us, even though uh, Chinoda isn't here with us tonight, uh, he is still, in a way, participating. Uh, but the four of us on the podcast have independently come up with our own list of what we think are our top five protagonists ever in uh, anime. And it's up to us to decide what we consider like top five to be. It could be our top five favorite, top, top five best written, top five coolest, whatever. Um, but we have developed our top five list independently. And I have taken all of those characters and put them on mm -hmm. to a uh, tier list. And we are going to rank them together. So, uh, without further ado... Through an extremely scientific and unbiased method of our <laughs> yeah. choice. Very unbiased. A very super secretive uh, formula that we've based upon, where there's factors involved and what. It's the Krabby Patty formula. It's the, Kra the Krabby Patty formula. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, let, let me let me bring it up here. So without further ado, this is indeed uh, our list it? of characters. Boom. Ooh. Uh, so we have 16 of them. And yes, there are four overlaps between the four of us. Uh, there is okay. one character that is on three of our lists. <laughs> uh, it's got to be. Nerds. It's got to be guts. It's guts. But, but I am going to go in the I'm going to go in alphabetical order of us host, and I'm also going to go in the order that the lists were presented to me uh, for making this tier list. So I guess that means I'm up first, and the first person on my list is our boy Spike Spiegel. S, S, All right. S, S tier. S tier for I think, Spike. Yeah, e easy S tier. We're, for we're Spike. pretty think... fucking biased. We what is one? <laughs> there, there are only two anime that I can confidently say. Out of all of us here, except probably Chinoda, actually, you know what? He's I don't think he's seen Bebop, right? But he, he hasn't has. seen yeah. Bebop yet. He yeah. has. He owns it. Oh, he has. He owns the. No, he hasn't watched all of it yet. But he, he hasn't, hasn't watched, watched all everything. of it. But he likes the yeah. show so far. Yeah, he watched like the first episode, and we're like, yeah, this is like the first episode. He's like, dude, it goes this so hard good. on the first episode. It's like, yeah, right. And it's like that every episode. <laughs> like that's the craziest right. thing. The quality in Bebop never fucking drops. But yeah, I feel like. We're, we're pretty biased like bebop and probably berserk are like we talk about them a lot about how we love watching these mm -hmm. shows and the characters everything about mm -hmm. them so i guess are they berserk, the closest thing the to like perfect like anime slash manga well because bebop, bebop no matter how many times i've rewatched it like nine now mm. i enjoy it it doesn't matter <clears> like <throat> even though i know the story it's just watching the characters being built up watching each and each individually unique character and then just the english voice acting is on point fucking music's the amazing character writing dynamic is just yeah mm. and, you know it also helps that the art is still good like bebop is a show that you can watch 50 years down the road to be like yeah it still looks good yeah i mean yeah. i don't think there's any character <clears throat> it, it 
that I can think of that exemplifies the rule of cool more than Spike Spiegel. <laughs> like the dude just exudes a level of coolness oh, yeah. that we all aspire to. <clears throat> I'll never get tired of that bit where he like teaches the guy how to fight. And it's basically just like a fucking Bruce Lee bit. Bruce Lee montage, he's doing. yeah. And it's so like so smooth and so cool and calm and collected, but it's so like, you know, he's so fun to be around as well. He has this sense of humor. It's like, what was that point in the movie? It's like, oh, I love a woman who can kick, can kick my ass or something I like that. I love a woman who can kick my ass. <laughs> yeah. So cool. <laughs> Do I look uh, like I have money? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that, that Spike, I, I was surprised that no one else said Spike Spiegel. Um because I like the story of Bebop more than I, I think Spike's a good main protagonist. Don't get me wrong, but mm. I think Bebop as a whole isn't like it's not just Spike that carries the story along. Oh it's no, it's yeah, the yeah, entire for sure. show, the crew. It's their entire dynamic. For me, I chose him simply because like he's such a cool character, and he's just like like it's high set, fun to watch. He's a very fun character to watch. Yeah, I I was gonna put Spike, but I was like, you know what? I feel like, because again, I like Spike. He's a really good protagonist, but I don't think he's like a top five protagonist for me because the show Bebop, if you take Spike out, it's still a good show. Like you could replace Spike with a different character as long as you write. It would be a very different show though. Yeah, it would be a very different show because I mean, I get it. Spike's the main character and like we follow his tragedy and stuff like that. But if we watch Bebop from the point of Vicious, for example, and we followed Vicious instead of Spike, it'd still be a really good show if it was written the same way. Mm. Yeah. Right? Because that, yeah. that was what the Netflix show did, right? Oh, mm. God. God. Can we not? Can we not, Natalia? Best wig <laughs> in the game, am I right? I, I really liked John Cho in it, though. And then the guy who yeah, played he was good. Black. I, I, I like as, those As much guys. as people shit on it, there were elements of the show I really liked. Well, because um, fall in prison, Alex. I I know that with at least John Cho, I know he watched Bebop before he like he, he researched the role. You know, this is crazy John Cho thing was really good at the show. When people really research their role portrayal. and they're like, great, this is the character I'm supposed to be. Like when um oh my god, Henry Cavill, when he played like he gets cast for The Witcher, he's like, All right, I'm just gonna go play all the Witcher games and read I'm gonna the books. learn everything I can about Geralt of Rivia. <laughs> yeah. And that's like why he was so good at it. And RIP to the Witcher show too. Like Netflix, thanks for killing everything we like. Yeah. <laughs> anyway uh moving on <laughs> before we get into that can of worms uh the second character on my list uh should be a surprise no one it is holo from spice and wolf uh b tier mid how b. dare you how fucking b tier i will literally reach through this i like her bro. i'm gonna lie jesus i like her too but like she doesn't have much of a character she has a personality but in the entire show it's more about lauren but that personality is. Is that so personality is, is, yeah, is so much fun. I also like, like the fact gonna... that over the course of the story, she really does grow. Like when you first meet Holo, she's a prissy, like mm-hmm. princessy bitch. And then she just becomes this. Really oh, yeah, because she's just like everyone I know dies. So like, whatever, I don't really care. And then like, <laughs> I do care <laughs> at the end. I like watching her character grow throughout the story of Spice and Wolf. And it's, it's a good romance story. But is she the best protagonist? I mean, in the show, I, I would consider in Spice and Wolf, Period. I would consider there ever that both Lawrence and Holo are like co protagonists. Yeah, because they are really a package deal for the story. Uh, so she doesn't stand on her own. You see. I mm. guess you could say that. Yes. Is she is she as cool as Spike? No, but no one can be as cool as Spike. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm willing. I'm willing to say A tier then. At okay, least, I will. I will listen. I will. I will take A. You'll take it. <laughs> I will take A tier. I will not. I will a not for say asshole. Mid slander. She kind of is an asshole at the beginning of the story. Kind of. Uh, she is an asshole. Yeah. I mean, there's no. Yeah. There's no sugarcoat. She is. She's a bitch at the beginning of the story. I don't know. I mean, I just, she's pretty cunning though. Like the whole like putting apples on top of the furs so that'd be like oh they smell like apples so you know they're extra they, they were well fed wool or foxes and it's like i just made that shit up <laughs> <laughs> like you cunning bitch welcome aboard to my trading company I like let's how scam she, more people i like how she goes from like 
having to be told about economics and how like trade works to being a master tradesman all in like four chapters. Well, because her nickname's Hollow the Wise anyway, right? She's like yeah, the Hollow god the wise of harvest. Wolf. Yeah. She's like the harvest god or whatever. So hmm. she's always been smart. And as we learn, like she wasn't she wasn't the harvest god because she actually had like supernatural powers to increase harvest. It's just because she was smart and knows how to like crop rotate and like fucking till the land. She's like, hey, go do these things for your land. Yeah. No more crops. All it's right. It's in line uh, with her character. So the next character on my list is so may not be considered a protagonist when you meet him, but he becomes the protagonist of a story arc. It is my boy Kaiki Deshu from the Monogatari series. And you'll notice that for this picture, I specifically chose a picture from Kitagi Inn. So I love he is Kaiki the protagonist of that story guy. arc. He, he is. He's yeah. the protagonist of an arc for sure. Does it yeah. make him one of the best protagonists of all time. I So one of the things I love is when an antagonist it kind of becomes a protagonist or when a villain kind of right. becomes a hero. And I think that Kaiki fulfills that role. Sure. But he kind of... He, he's an antagonist when we first meet him. And when you first meet him, but he becomes the protagonist really. of an entire arc. I mean, he just has an arc. That's that's about yeah, it. Yeah, he has an arc. That's why, but it's he's it's why he's one of my favorite because like he's there for so oh no, so I like Kaiki. infrequently like, he's so infrequently there, but he leaves such an indelible mark on the Monogatari. There's series. a reason Kaiki is the one, if not the best character in that show, because he's just his writing is that sharp mm. and he's that captivating to watch. Like I can watch this guy talk about the rain all day, be like, Oh, that's so oh my gosh, that's incredible. <laughs> you know, and, but I don't know if I would classify him as like the greatest protagonist of all time or anything, even though I love him because it's just like pretty much taking like the point of view of us, the viewers, and be like, whoop, shift it to his perspective. It's like, oh, it's just a guy. Let me ask you something to tie. In, in that mm. first episode of Hitagi End, when he's doing the whole monologue to himself, trying to talk himself into helping Hitagi, <laughs> is that not one of the best fucking main character monologues of all time? I love that monologue. He has so many good <laughs> monologues in, the, in in general. He's so good. And everything, it's like, like, everything he's saying to you is like, no da, no da. And he's like trying like, to convince us. It's like, no, no. <laughs> I'm just not going to convince me. And then all of a sudden, you just like, Yes, da. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. He's not a main for tag. I can't rank him really high. That's why, yeah. Place, like that's why, like I, I, I'll give it a B just because he's like an incredible character, but it's not a protagonist yeah. as much as he is. He is. I he also feel like a, bee, a protagonist, like, so yeah, I will, it, I will allow marks off for this. Yes, but in the arc where he is the protagonist, I think he's, he's done incredible. very well. Obviously, yeah. All right, you know what? I, I will take the B. I will take the B. Uh, next is the very first. Um, it's the very first uh, overlap in our list, and it's actually one that's on all three of our list. It is guts from Berserk. S tier. S tier. No, S tier. Again, all the way. this is no competition. First and foremost, he's on all of our lists. We know this, hmm. and <laughs> dude, we talk about Berserk so much. We love Berserk. I love Spoilcast Berserk. win. Never, because you guys aren't caught up on the fucking manga. Oh, shut up! <laughs> I'm the apparently the only real fan. Like, <laughs> okay, but yeah, I mean, taking our time, you know, savoring the moment. We always talk about Berserk, and we always talk about why we love guts. Like, even in our um top male protagonists or top um guys in anime boys. episode, top boys, yeah, favorite boys in anime. Like, we don't need to say any more about guts. Like, I, I feel like universally the world understands why everyone loves guts yeah i the dude has been through the ringer i mean quite literally yeah i don't think is there is there any character that suffered more in anime or manga kirito um actually um oh, oh my god i don't even know the guy's name first Fucking, of all how dare from... you say how dare you like speak kirito and guts yeah, name the like, same why would you say kirito? he's kirito. the black swordsman <laughs> fuck you get out of here get out of here I love that oh, bit. Oh in my god, the, what's the guy? Subaru. Subaru I think it was Zero. There we go. Actually, yeah. Subaru from Wii Zero really suffered a lot more than Guts. I like the the bit in that one gig video of SAO in five minutes where Kirito is like, I'm the Black Swordsman. It, gut, it cuts to Guts. It's like, no, you're not. 
<laughs> he's literally hu the human spirit. He's the story of the human spirit. What else do you need? He's oh god. I could talk about this guy all day. Like the journey <laughs> going through. Incredible. It's so moving, you know? Yes. Like it is. It, it's an extremely even though it gets story. so dark, you're still like, yeah, it is. All right. Well, I'm glad we all agree on that. Uh, <laughs> no competition. Easy. So the last character on uh, my top five list is also an overlap, but it is only an overlap with John, and it is Matoko Kusanagi. Matoko Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> I mean, I'm biased. Uh, I love Ghost in the Shell so much. I love Motoko. She's one of, not, e not even just one of the best female leads in an anime, just one of mm. the best protagonists in my mind. Yeah, um, I mean, she's a lot she's, of characters. Which version, though? She's, uh, I, I think Ghost OG the is the best, but yeah. Um, the original? I, yeah, the I, think, the, I yeah. think the version of her from the movie is the best, but I also think that uh, the version of her from Standalone Complex is I love the almost yeah. as good. Um, and it's I love it's it. kind of the it's the version, at least character design wise, I think that most people gravitate toward. Yeah, I I, I love. Uh, the standalone complex motoko probably that's probably my favorite just because again I'm, I'm i'm biased all right i loved ghost <laughs> in the shell standalone complex was one of the animes that i wasn't allowed to watch because it was too late at night so i'd sneakily like turn on the tv so i could watch it on tsunami at night you had to keep without... one eye on your door <laughs> yeah <laughs> like bro how did the touch of coma not like wake everyone up in your house <laughs> because so i had I put it on because it had a little auxiliary thing on there. So then, like, you turn it on oh. and you just put it. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> I'd be up there watching Smart. the TV with my one headphone or one earbud in the other earbud, like, off so I can, like, listen for the door. <laughs> 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 the adventures of young John. <laughs> oh, man. The ways that I tried to consume anime because I wanted to, I wanted to watch cartoons all the time and I still watch cartoons all the time. So I guess I, I've never really grown up, have I? No, but yeah, I beat you, Kusanagi? mom. <laughs> She's just. A really good protagonist in general uh her strength her actual character the development that she goes through in standalone complex one and two and just like just ah, the voice acting god it's so good can i can we just i know i know this isn't um this isn't like indicative of how well the character is written but i do want to give props to the english va for mm. uh the major mary elizabeth mcglynn i can't like i i've watched i've watched ghost in the shell subbed and it's good don't get me wrong like the, the japanese voice actors the do a great job but oh, mary no, she's, elizabeth I, I mcglynn think... does a really great job as the major i think that they did a really well um did it really well they did a really good job <laughs> being able to translate the personality types because mm -hmm. Motoko has the exact same personality in the Japanese uh, dub as well as the English dub. Yeah. Like Mary Elizabeth McGlynn just knocks it out of the park. This is the major to me. She will always be the yeah. major. You can never replace her in my heart. And yeah. I think the person who does the uh, Japanese dub does a really good job as well. I yeah. just prefer watching Ghost in the Shell in English. <laughs> Honestly, like the entire dub cast of Ghost in the Shell, especially Stand Alone so Complex, solid. does a great yeah. job. Yeah. Everyone's um, just like on point. But I, I also want to say about uh, the major, she is a great example of what Hollywood wants a strong female character TM to be. Yet yeah. they can't do it. <laughs> She's just Definitely. a character, though. Like it. See, that's the, the thing. fact that she's a woman is thought... never part of her character. Yeah. Well, I mean, other than the fact that, <laughs> trust me, bro, this five minute um, naked scene needs to be in the movie. Trust me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you ever read the manga of the Ghost in the Shell manga? No. So there's an actual like plot point in the manga that in the world of Ghost in the Shell, there's like this whole like cyber sex culture, but only women are able to do it what like there's something about women's like brain chemistry that only allows them to do it because if men try to do it their brain chemistry like it kills them if they, they allude try to that it. in the show in the uh, sound, they, they do allude complex. to it in the show in the manga they actually show it and apparently like something the major does occasionally to make extra money is she has like lots of lesbian cyber sex yeah Dude, in the show they, like, I love that. every now and then show her like some like some girlfriends around her in her apartment. It's like, oh, what are you guys doing? Um, 
I just thought that was like an interesting thing that they never really they allude to it briefly in like standalone complex, but they never ever like delve into it like the manga did. Hmm. Anyway, it's just a factor of her her personality that I wanted to bring up for some reason. Uh, I think I think she's an A. Easy A. See, yeah. I I'm very biased. I want to put her an S, but I, I, I do. Wanna, I John, I, do I understand. Too. But I understand why she would be an A tier protagonist because yeah, she she's written as a character and she has that certain personality. Like it, there's not a there's some growth in how she views the world, but overall she mainly remains unchanged in her ways mm. of like I'm yeah. this badass like person, and that that's the great thing about her character why I like her so much because it's she's not a I'm not a badass boss babe. I'm she's just a badass person in general. Yeah, like she's yeah. got a crew that is super loyal and respects her. There is and, there is a little bit of character growth, though, for her in terms of how she deals with things, because when you first meet her, she's very cold and calculating and it's like, get the job done, go home kind of personality. And then, you know, by the end or, or as the story goes along, she kind of becomes more in touch with her human side. Like yeah. she's actually mm. asking the people on her crew, like, "Hey, are you okay?" Like, yo, know, it was some yeah, intense starts, stuff. I don't, I, mm, I don't know about that. Like, I don't know it's a, it's a little bit of growth. I think she's always taking she's, care. Like even before she became a, um, you know, she was always loyal to her. Like, to yeah, her, she's what, always been loyal to her nine? team. Yeah, section yeah. nine. She's always been loyal to yeah. her team. Yeah. Like that's why her team is so loyal to her because she's the major has always been there for them. Yeah, but I'll say I don't. I say we'll put her an A, but like think of it as an A plus. Sure, sure, yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, so that that is it for my list. Um, obviously, when we get to the character on y'all's list, we'll just kind of skip over. But uh, we'll move on to Chinoda's list, even though he's not here. Chinoda had absolutely no overlaps with any of us. Yeah, and he um, did that on purpose because he's a bitch. <laughs> to be fair, he didn't know what y'all's list was, and it just kind of worked out that way. I mean, he kind of. He guessed which ones he would have overlap with. So he said, I'm not going to bring them up. I'm like, all right, well, that's fine, <laughs> uh, I guess. So the first person on Chinoda's list is Violet Evergarden from Ooh. Violet Evergarden. Um, I think Violet is a very good protagonist. I, I like a really Violet Evergarden a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think there's anyone in recent history that's watched Violet Evergarden. It's like, yeah, no, she's a terrible protagonist. Like, no, it's it, she's a great protagonist because it's such a sad fucking story. <laughs> And she uh, does grow a lot through the course yeah, of the story. Her yeah, her growth is so emotional. Turning from watch, a you know child soldier in a, a robotic child soldier who's only meant for killing to like becoming actually human and embracing her emotions. No, she becomes like robotic only after the war. <laughs> oh yeah, you forgot about that. Fingers, she loses man. her Fingers, arms in the war. Yeah, yeah. girl, no, what those robotic hands as do. In, like, robotic in the not a physical sense but in like i am a child soldier let me go kill people in the war yeah that's what i meant she's like programmed to yeah yeah, yeah. i don't is she an s no i don't think so i, I wouldn't say an s tier because because most of the time she's not necessarily the most interesting character in the story right she's like a vessel to experience other people's story true alongside and through that she growth, ends up you know? growing and yeah you know as much as i love uh yui ishikawa uh oh she's so good she's a very amazing voice actress i just feel like she's a little bit too plain to be like an, an amazing s tier protagonist because her storyline isn't as important as like the world storyline mm. it kind of suffers from the whole like um i am the main character but i am not the main character like <laughs> the world is really that's the, kind the of the point, point. Yeah. like i am the main oh, like, character the of this overarching yeah. story however i that's, am not the main character of this immediate story that's sort of the point because uh, like she's healing from the war alongside the world itself was like healing from all the scars of war it's like hmm. something the violet ever a great character well is showing yeah. how like not only the main character is changing but everything around her is changing too yeah especially yeah, in the a, movie a yeah. A, a plus, you know, A okay. plus. It's okay. not S tier. Man, the A is just, it's full of women. <laughs> so we're all the women are going to go in A tier because God knows we can't give women top billing in this bitch. <laughs> There's a clip cool. if I've ever heard one. 
Uh, all right. So Alex next- Senpai hates women? Yes. <laughs> Fucking disgusting. Don't say yes. <laughs> women oh, in my S tier? Scandalous. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, I don't think anyone else is going to make it into S tier from my per. Eh, maybe, eh, you know, there's two people I might put in there. There's a couple people left I think could end up there. But anyway. I, I feel like there's, I'm confident there's two other people I'd be like, oh yeah, solid S tier characters. Well, the next one on uh, Chinoda's list is list Lisk. I don't know. List? I can speak. I I, I I can speak. I can speak. Is uh, Shigeo Mob Kageyama from Mob Psycho 100. Solid A. Solid A. Uh, I, Solid A. It's a good I boy. want to give Mob an S tier, but the problem is that he, uh, watching his growth, like if you, we have a spoiler cast dedicated to watching all of We have an uh, entire Mob spoiler Psycho. cast series. <laughs> discussing all the seasons of mob psycho i i love his character growth i love the direction that they went with it Hmm. but again he's like he is a main character but the rest of the world is also just as interesting as him he's not like the protagonist of all time Hmm. i will say it's there's a moment that solidifies him as an a for me we talk about it all the time there's that moment in season two at the end where he's running and he's not losing his breath and that simple bit, you're like, fuck yeah, let's go, yeah. And it's like <laughs> such a simple, like, uh, nothing seen, but it's so powerful because you grew attached to this kid, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Enough said. For, for, for me, I, I, I have no problem placing him in the A tier. For me, he's like an A minus, not like an A plus. Because, like, yeah. it does feel like you're watching more of the people and the world around him change along with him. But in some cases, the people around him are a little more exciting than just him. But he's, unlike Violet, he's more of, has a direct impact on the world around him. On yes. the world, yeah. Because that's, yeah, a, yeah, that's yeah. the kind of story it is telling. For yeah. sure. But For sure. one of the problems is that they don't ever explore, like, how he affects the rest of the world other than, like, through the lens of his younger brother. But mm. only his younger brother. Like, everyone else apparently just doesn't give a fuck about the fact that he's literally the strongest esper of all of all time yeah all right uh so next odd to notice list is the lovable idiot kazuma sato from konosuba he's a he's an f f tier f tier f tier bro and giggles I worst think, yeah. fucking protagonist like f tier what the hell are you do? like why is he here i think i think it definitely is on brand for us to put him at the bottom uh i mean i love him but so, he's the worst See, the thing is, he's written to be the worst, right? So it's like, yeah. obviously, we can't give him, like, A, B, or even, a, like, God, imagine someone try to rank him in S tier. Like, he's meant to be awful, but he's great at being awful. <laughs> he's well-written a- at being <laughs> awful, which is a really, it's a conundrum, John. <laughs> That's a joke, though, that he's, like, an awful piece of shit, but somehow he's the most competent guy in the group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's amazing it's to me that Konosuba, it, it started out as like this parody of Isekai, and it just became one of the best Isekai. It's great. Season 3 hype next year. I, I know. The Mega Meme oh, spinoff right. was really the good. just came out, right? Um, the, um, they it, just it, said it, next Season year. 3 was like... It just, it just you, said you guys posted something on Discord. It was like from they just said 2024. It just says 2024. Okay. It doesn't have like an actual date or anything yet or a season. Um, but yeah, well, I feel, I feel like... I feel like on brand is putting him at the very bottom of the list. I can. Yep. Um, all right. Next is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's high. Mm, that hand gesture. <laughs> so I have to ask before it, before we go on to the next one. Has anyone besides me and Chinoda seen Legend of the Galactic Heroes? I haven't seen it yet. I, I haven't. Oh seen it. fuck! <laughs> I don't know how to it's talk yours, about this man. next. So the next character on Chinoda's list is Reinhard uh, from Legend of the Galactic Heroes. I don't know how to talk about him without spoiling the shit out of Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Give him your ranking. Uh, if I were to rank him, and I, I wish Jinoda were here so we could talk about this, I would say he's a solid B. I, I would say, based on the, what we have here, like in, in the show, he's like fucking S tier. But based on what we have here, I would give him you a know solid what? B. You know what? I concur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never seen the show, but solid mid length. Solid mid length. 
in, in the show though he's a great character reinhardt is absolutely fantastic um but in terms of what we have here i'll say i'll say b just for Shinoda's sake since we already rated one of his characters a d <laughs> <laughs> um and then the last one on his list is uh chise hattori from um oh god what is that anime called ancient magus bride ancient, yeah, ancient magus, magus bride. bride thank you i haven't even uh, solid uh because her name is uh chisu solid c like <laughs> she with a c, so it goes with c. i've never seen ancient magus bride so i have no she's idea she's a she's a pretty good main character her and elias are make a really good pair um I, is this the one that gets raped no Ooh, Wait, Alex. Is it, no, you were talking about it, John. There's like a very problematic relationship that goes on in this, isn't there? It's problematic because Elias is like a thousand years old and she says like fucking 12 and he buys her oh. as a slave. <laughs> oh, that is her, that is not good. Yeah, it's problematic in that sense. But at the same time, it's like, well, Elias may be like a thousand years old, but he's still a kid on the inside because he actually never grew up. Hmm. And <laughs> then like she say she's really a she's a really good character, but. I know that I know Chinoda would probably put her in like A tier or something. I, I honestly feel like she's more of a B tier character just because like Why? she pairs because she has to pair with Elias. It's she can't mm. be a standalone character like the newest. I, I she haven't doesn't seen the carry newest. the story. Yeah. Well, I mean, kind of she does. The newest oh. season is kind of like that part. But that's my personal opinion, obviously. Is um, the show good? It's all right. I've been, I mean, it's I, well animated I, from what I've seen. I've read the manga. I've only watched the first season of the anime and I've read the manga. So I think the show is it's okay. Shinoda like, loves it. Well, the yeah. problem with Ancient Magus Bride is that it drags its feet a lot. So, and that, you know, imagine the manga dragging its feet. Now you want to <laughs> oh, see <God>. anime. <laughs> so I, it's a very patient watch. I'll say that. But yeah, okay. I, I really do like those two characters. So B? Yeah, she's a very okay. solid character. B, yeah. All right. Uh, so I mean, for shits is... and giggles, I would put her in C because her name starts with C. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to so upset just raising people his too fist. much. I, I have a feeling, based on what I see here, left is there's not going to be anyone in C. <laughs> no, I don't think anyone in this list is going to be in C. <laughs> um, which is fine. There's one face um, here I don't recognize. Um, so Probably rock. Uh, so we're going to get Probably. into John's list right now. And it starts with Rock from uh, Black Lagoon. John, I Your actually crew. very nearly, very nearly put Revy in my list. I, listen, I would put the whole entire cast of Black Lagoon. If you, if <laughs> yes. I just, like, I love every single character. Just the there. five main characters of Black yeah. Lagoon. Because they're all really fucking good. Like, I, I put Rock, though, because I absolutely love Black Lagoon. It's one of my favorite animes of all mm. time. And I think Rock is just a really good character. He's really well built. Uh, Natai, have you watched Black Lagoon? Not yet. Boy, okay. you should Boy. watch. It. I know I love Boy. it. I know I love it, but I need to watch it. Uh, another another anime that has a fantastic English dub. Yeah, yeah. I plan on watching it dubbed. I mean, I watched it in Japanese, but the English dub is probably the right way to go because they're supposed to be speaking English the entire time. <laughs> like it's that's. The, this is the weirdest thing like when they go to the japan and it's like they're supposed to be speaking english in japan but they're speaking japanese so like the translations <laughs> don't really fucking make sense <laughs> but yeah, i will I say they, they i will say they make uh revy's japanese voice actor do a lot of english and it does become grating after a while because she's very bad at it yeah second barrage is kind of like uh, because of that but i think rock is an excellent main protagonist because i, I love watching his story like he is the main protagonist in this world because we mm. watch everything through the lens of this Japanese uh, office worker who just literally gets sent to die. And that's it. And <laughs> like, watch a salary his... man who's had fucking enough. Yeah. And then watching him transform from like this regular guy to like a man who's just into a life of crime. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> like he becomes one of the biggest powers like people come into respect rock like you when he mm. first shows up everyone's like oh you're the new guy huh <laughs> lagoon company you guys are fools for taking on this newbie and then now they're like all right rock what should we do <laughs> have either of you ever seen it's a live action movie from the uh the early 90s i believe um it's called falling down it's got michael douglas i haven't seen it no 
Rock yeah, it reminds true. me so much of the main character in that movie. It's unbelievable. Like he's an office worker who just one day he has enough and he just goes on this fucking rampage across LA and it's fucking amazing to watch. And Rock is so much oh. like that. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I'm I'm again I'm very biased. I'd put him in an S tier for my list, but I'd probably ooh. say he's more of an A tier character. He's his growth is fun to watch throughout the the course of yeah, the just like the well. fact that when he first joins on, he's just like he doesn't he's meek, he doesn't know what to do. He reverts to his like old salary man ways of like, oh I'm so sorry, like oh I, I get that done right away, sir. To like now he's fucking smoking a cigarette. He's a big boy now, and he's just like. <laughs> All right, this is how we're gonna do it. All right, <laughs> it's, it's really when they good. first meet. Rock and Revy are like polar opposites of each other, and the more time they spend together, the more they become like each other. Yeah, and it's oh god, and then the whole Rock and Revy dynamic. Like, oh my god, dude! <laughs> After that that episode where they like light the cigarettes with each other, where uh, Revy's like, "Hey, give me a light," and then Rock's like, "What?" Chief Watsup has the lighter. He's like, "You idiot." With your cigarette. So then they like go in for a pseudo kiss. And I'm like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of my best ships of all time. Oh, God, <laughs> uh, I would say for me. Easy A tier. Uh, yeah, easy A. I, like yeah. I'm kind of biased too. Like I want to put him in like a low S tier. But I'll say like an A plus. Anyway. Right. Black Lagoon's really good. Everyone should watch it. Yeah. yeah. It's on Netflix. Yeah it is. Is it? Uh, I didn't know. I own I think it. it is. So, <laughs> so uh, next on John's list is a character that is also on Natai's list. It is Lelouch from Code Geass. What? Natai, you put Lelouch? <laughs> yep. Wow. I love my I love my my <laughs> my genocidal can we Hitler talk about emperor how, somewhere we, there. We've never done a Code Geass spoiler cast, but we talked. I talked uh, about Code Show and I did. About. Yeah, yeah Show and uh, Oh, okay. Yeah. Way back in the day, way, way back. back in the day, I, I absolutely love Code Geass because there are again. only two seasons of Code Geass. There are I only know, two right? seasons of Code Geass. Don't be it ridiculous is, of doing continue again. Right? Like, you see, I pulled from all of my top anime of all time for my main protagonist, so mm -hmm. obviously, every single one I'm biased on. But Code Geass is again another one of my all time favorite animes. I've rewatched oh. it so many times. Season one and season two are just fucking phenomenal. Uh, I, I love the character is a of Lulu. Powerhouse. Dude, he's like, show. I get the, uh, I, I know why people would be like, oh, he's not that great of a character because, nah, you know, it's like, nah because he's, he's an edgelord's dream of like, oh, I'm so smart than everyone else. But it's like, yeah, you sure, know what's Lelouch crazy? Is smart. He plays chess. He with is everyone. smarter than everyone. He is. But the, what really shines to me is like by the end of it, it's like his humanitarian side, like his humanity, right? He may be cold and cl calm and collected and stuff. And he has a very pure minded, he has a, He's very goal oriented in the very beginning. He's very robotic and like, I will make sure the world burns so none only will be able to survive or some shit, right? Like, get that, that's how he is because of how he was raised and like with the whole fucking thing with none only's mom and shit. But yeah. by the end of it, like, he, he, he becomes human and he does it for more of a noble cause than anything else. And that's what I love. I love watching him grow as a character, being and affected by, by everything that he does. That Luge comes from an era of anime where everyone wanted to have like the edge lord main character, and I miss those yeah. days. <laughs> yeah. Some where where shit. where is our modern day Lelouch? Where is our modern day Light Yagami? Where 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 <laughs> is our borderline I mean, psychotic? I mean, MC? if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, um, Oshino no Ko has a pretty good candidate for that. I mean, Aqua is pretty pretty Chunibio. You know, <laughs> he's pretty psychotic. Yeah, but in a um, very good way. But Lelouch is like it's so satisfying to see him overcome every challenge he's coming across. You know, because he's so brilliant and he's so ruthless in his actions yeah. as well. And sometimes you're like, bro, I think you're going a bit too far with what you're doing. And it's like people are actually call him out on his actions, and he's like trying to come to terms with the, with his actions, like. Is this actually like, are, am I making actual good change in this world? And I think like, it's so much fun to see him take on the entire world where he's trying to like build the resistance and whatnot. I think it's yeah. just a fascinating character to watch. It's a fucking amazing story. And then, you know, especially with how it ends and everything, you're just like, dude. That's what solidifies I'm, Lelouch for me is like S tier. S -tier yeah. S -tier I'm going to say S. Like S. Yeah. Agreed. Lelouch is S tier. 
Um, all right. So the next one on uh, John's list, which is the last one, uh, because the other two are overlaps, uh, because the other, <laughs> only other two characters on his list is Guts and the Major, <laughs> yeah. uh, is Naruto Uzumaki, which Dude, I was surprised I fucking... you had Naruto on your list. Because he is he embodies the will of fire. The theme Believe of it. Naruto about like never, you know, believe it, literally never <laughs> giving up. Like that one thing that he shares with Mob is that they don't give up and they they change the world around them for the better, too. Yeah. Like just Naruto's entire story of overcoming everything and becoming Hokage, you know, he's believing his dream, believe it, and all this other shit. Like, ah, dude, it's so good. Getting I, fat off of ramen. Yeah, I learned, I, to me, I think Naruto, he he is the titular shonen like protagonist. I can't think of anyone who's the more shonen than Naruto himself. Deku. Yeah. Deku. <laughs> Green Naruto, you mean? <laughs> Green Naruto. Yeah. yeah. I've said it before, Natai. I will say it again. The only thing MHA is good for is the born. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Hold on, they're underage. Don't do that. <laughs> cut, cut, cut. <laughs> but, <coughs> not all. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I will concede that Naruto is not an S tier character, but hmm. I will fight anyone who says he's not at least an A tier character because again, just watching this boy grow from like I'm gonna be Hokage to like actually caring about the people around him and, and the funny thing is he's always cared about the people around him and they never cared about him, but he never stopped caring about them. Aww, and it's just it's so a good, good boy dude. yeah it, and it's, it's like it's, no matter how it, and this isn't yeah. even something that he does i mean in a roundabout way he does but it's also fun watching the characters around him that start off not liking him too much like come around and think of him like as a as a you know a compatriot like a friend a companion yeah because they see man my man naruto he real for real for real you know what i'm saying like <laughs> bro i think well like nothing exemplifies that <laughs> dynamic more than the relationship between uh himself and neji yeah like neji starts off absolutely abhorring naruto like like despising him to the fullest extent mm. and by the time shippuden comes around like the dude genuinely feels like not only is he like one of the greatest friends he's ever mm. had one of the few genuine friends he's ever had like he wants him to become part of his family yeah because it it's uh you know what, what are you Nezhi laughing and... at natai yeah. i can't with john be like my man now our toys for real for real <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> I was not prepared he's for not that. about it, dude. He's for real, for real. <laughs> Listen, Naruto, he's literally right or die. <laughs> like, he's he will sacrifice his uh. life to save the fucking village, and he, he's done that multiple times. But, like, the reason why Neji, the whole dynamic between Neji and Naruto, why Neji hates him in the beginning is because Neji sees Naruto as, like, the world despises you, but you still get up and fight against it and try to be mm. good for it. And I hate that. It's like, because he, he's, you're everything that I am, but instead of accepting your fate like I have, you're fighting against it. And that's what makes that dynamic so fucking great and strong. And that's what, like, when Neji finally, like, realized, like, oh, my man's been putting in the work. He's putting in the hours. And this, he's, he's so fucking. He's for real, for real. He's for real, yeah. for real. Because <laughs> <Like, I, laughs> he, he embodies the will of fire, bro. That was the main running theme. He never gave up. He doesn't give up. Ah, he's roll, roll. Shonen and John's madness. right, at least for me, and maybe it's indicative of the era that I grew up in. You know, when I really got into anime, it was like the early 2000s. That when I think, like, if you were to just say the term shonen protagonist to me, Naruto is the first thing that comes to my mind. Yeah. I will I concede I... that Luffy probably would come up to my mind too, because there's another part of like shonen is like the adventure aspect and let me tell you yeah. about how one piece has really good adventure aspect <laughs> like the discovery and the adventure and going through it with luffy as the main character but yeah to me like the the titular shonen protagonist is naruto so are we thinking s or are we thinking a i will concede b. and say he's more of an a <laughs> b did you okay. just say who said b fucking said Murray, I, haven't bro. <laughs> I haven't watched naruto i have no horse in this race oh okay no like i i can't say he's an s tier character because you know, because he is a typecasted like shonen character, he doesn't mm. show uh, a lot of major depth. Because like the characters, if you were saying like Pain, for example, when we meet mm. Pain, 
Pain. And like if Payne was the main character or something, or Toby even was the main character, I could possibly call him S tier, depending on how you write the story because of the depth of their character. Naruto doesn't have as much depth as like the rest of his cast, I would say. But, but John, I hear, I is hear, Toby uh, a good boy? <laughs> what do you hear, Ntai? I hear that that his son is a re- has a really good show. Actually, Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I I've never I've, I read the first nine chapters of Boruto and I was like, nah, it's not for me. Again, haven't seen it. I have no horse in this <laughs> yeah. race. I don't care. <laughs> I I think the music in Boruto is really good. The fight scenes look cool. Have but... you seen Bort? <laughs> Bort? 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 Bort Simpson. <laughs> Bort Simpson. <laughs> All right, so that's actually the end of John's list. The only other two are overlaps uh, that we've already talked about. So we have three left, and uh, they are all Natai's, uh, besides his overlaps of Guts and Lelouch. So the first one on his list is Simone the Digger from Gurren Lagann. So S-tier. you remember what I said? S tier. Uh, Simone. Yeah, S-tier. His name S-tier. is S. S tier. Simone. You remember that's, what I that's said? That's all we need is a metro. Row, row, really. fight the power. <laughs> row, row, fight the power. Fight the power. You know what I said about guts and the story of the human spirit? It's the same with Simone. It's yeah, like, exactly. Just that need to explore and, and continue like, again, and proceed forward. Gurren Lagan is one of the anime we always talk about, and we've talked ad nauseum about why Simone is so good and the fact that I, I I have had to watch the show I've watched it I had to watch it twice to really appreciate and on my third watch through is when I was like dude this is like one again one of the best anime it's a, we it's should a do a spoiler like, cast for Gurren Lagann at some point we have should we, have we, we really never have done one. Oh my we God. really should this is a good give me a good excuse to rewatch all of it yes it does yeah. but yeah Shout like the dub as well dude good luck finding it <laughs> wait is this still on Netflix I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I thought Netflix might have taken it off, but I'm yeah, not like sure. the entire I'm story not... of uh, Gurren Lagann about the human spirit, right? Mm-hmm. About how they in, they survive and endure, and forever will survive and endure, and how they have the courage to pick up where they left off and make a better world. Like no one embodies that more than Shimon the Driller, honestly. Oh, it's streaming on Hulu. He's... Oh, he's such a. His growth, we talk about it so many times, but his growth, his actual growth and seeing him, him become more and more mature throughout the story is like, it's so inspiring. Because it's, like, it's like a wake-up call. Literally in the first arc when he does the common pose, like, whoo, whoo, oh. my boy. <laughs> bro, my bro, boy. fight the power, bro. Oh, God. And then we get to the end of the show and you have that final shot. And it's like... We've come such a long way, and it's 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 very again very similar to guts. Why I like guts, just to see how he like never relents, always keeps pushing forward, mm. and also manages to to take everyone with him. That's the, that same like uh, step forward. You know, it's like so inspiring. So it's like every time it's like, oh. bro. I remember watching with some of my friends the first episode. Like a few months ago, and we got so emotional watching it again. It's like, oh, because you get so invested in their in Simone's communist relationship. I, I would argue see, that oh. Gurren Lagan is so much better if you watch it with friends <laughs> because it's I, about I, the power I actually of I think I, I'm with you on that. <sighs> but yeah, so yeah. easy S tier for me as well. Like, I love Simone. I just, mm. uh, all right, uh, so next on Natai's list is Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. I, I think, think Edward's Ed. a he's a very easy A for me. Yeah, I can't really put I him agree. in S tier. Like I I can see arguments for why he would be in S tier. In all honesty, don't, don't let Mal get a hold of I, this. <laughs> I know. I, I'll one. tell you what. I think is like a really fun shonen protagonist because he carries with so much cynicism. And so much he's so skeptical about the whole like idea of religion and whatnot. And he's like, he's kind of a stuck of bread in to some extent, but he's been through so much that you right. kind of understand why he has this very cynical view of the world around him and people in, in authority and whatnot. <laughs> I think it's very entertaining that part. When, when you but... first meet Edward Elric, he's like a fedora tipping atheist. <laughs> 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 ah. Milady. Milady. <laughs> I love that part in in the first uh, episode of uh, the original two thousand two thousand three, mm. where it's like he's having that conversation with Rose, and she's like, 
and and they're having this uh, they're talking about like god and whatnot they're like where like like what she's like looking for answers from like this false god or whatnot the false priest and him being with the you know metal leg and whatnot being through seeing like actual shit is like telling her and she's like all like just depressed in her misery and he's like walking up to her and she's and he's telling her you have two working legs get up and use them you know he's like very a very pragmatic type of character which i always really appreciate as well um i just think it's a very unique type of voice in shonen like main characters yeah yeah um, because yeah. instead of having like because he first of all he's a very he's not white eyed he's very like down to yeah. earth and very like yeah, yeah. Skeptical he's not the dumb young and naive guy who has to like go through trials and tribulations like no he starts off I guess he was like that when he was little, right? When he was dumb, young, yeah. and naive. But, uh, you know, after what he happened, had his it's comeuppance. Like, yeah, like, it's like, bro, the world hit back. And he took that personally. <laughs> it, it's funny because, like, a lot of a lot of shonen protagonists do start out that way. It started as, like, this wide-eyed, naive, like, not wise to the world protagonist. And then they get their comeuppance sometime during the story. And then they become jaded. With Edward Elric, he starts out jaded as fuck. Yeah. Which is super yeah. interesting. Yeah. I always um, loved uh, Edward. I, I could, I I could good easily put him in S tier, but I, I'd be okay with it. I think it's an A. Because also yeah. he has the dynamic with his brother and like, you know, it's it's always too fun to see him bounce off of other characters. You know, he's not the yeah. only pillar in the story. Right. For sure. For sure. All right. Then that leaves us the last uh, character on the ties list is Bro, Gintoki. My guy. From uh, it, Gintama. I, I am extremely biased. We know. I want to put Gintoki in S tier. But Gintoki in all honesty, awesome. bro, like, I don't. Is it just me and you that's watched Gintama? Yeah. I don't, I don't think know if has ever watched it. I don't know if Shinoda has watched it. it. Bro, he Gintoki hasn't? is so. Like, the rabid male fan base set aside and the crazy people there. Uh, Gintoki is such a good protagonist because. He's funny, but he's also serious. Uh, he, he has a tragic backstory and stuff like that, but he doesn't let it get him down. Instead, he cares. He still cares about his bonds and his friendships and stuff like that. It's funny. We like, ended on two characters that Mal has the biggest boner for. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. They're going to fucking downvote our video <laughs> to hell because we're uh, or dislike our video to hell because we didn't place Gintoki and um, Edward at S tier. The only characters oh, in S tier. <laughs> You guys don't have light on your list. What's wrong with you? Ew. <laughs> yeah. Are you I telling me you don't have you know Gasai on your list? What? <laughs> Ugh, shut up. Yeah, I, I, I cannot speak to a greater character than Gintoki. Just because, like, God, he's such a the fact that you're, even though everything that happened when he was the um the fucking white windstorm, what the fuck was his name? The White oh Samurai, God. wasn't it? The I have Samurai, I, yeah. I'm still on episode 100 and something. So I still have like 200 episodes to Only go. Only on episode. Like, despite this, everything that happened dude. and, you know, what he did, like, uh, the regret that he feels, he still moves on and, like, he still protects his friends and his bonds, stuff like that. Like, in, in a very typical shonen fashion, he cares about his friends. It's the power of friendship. And just, Sugita kills it as Gintoki. Sugita is a fucking Sugita amazing voice actor. the show. Yeah. I don't know if... I would have loved him as much as I do if it wasn't Sugita, you know? Yeah, Sugita really brings out the role of... Because Sugita has such a dynamic range. He is like Gintoki. When, he, when you need yeah. to be serious, he's serious. But he's also, like, aloof. And, like, he's he can roll with the punches. And he does his funny, funny poo-poo joke. Like, ah ha 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 pee poo poo humor. Yeah, it, I'm never get tired of seeing him get so emotionally invested in Shonen Jump magazines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and everyone's guy. like, are you six? It's like, no, I need my oh. comic books. <laughs> I, yeah. I just For me, think personally, it's like one of the most in S-tier, But I will concede, like, because of how sometimes unserious he is and how lackadaisical he is, I don't think he would be, uh, he probably wouldn't make an S tier list for if. I'm pretty sure if Alex watched it, he'd be like, no, he's definitely not S tier. I've only watched yeah. like three think... episodes of the show. And they're the three episodes that you showed me, John. <laughs> you showed me like two like heavily comedy based episodes and one like that delves deeply into like the shonen aspect of it. And I like the comedy way more. Like the comedy, the comedy yeah. episodes are funny as fuck. The comedy, is the comedy I mean, is that's great, great, but like, I like the serious episodes too, though. They're, they're really good. I, I like the comedy way more than the, than, the, than the serious episodes. John, 
John, the last arc I watched was the Crisis in the uh, uh, Shinsegumi arc, I yeah. think, with the blonde guy. Oh, yeah. it's so fucking good. The, I, Great I'm trying to remember which episode you... I think it was... Oh, it was the one where they went to the bathhouse. <gasps> Wait. Is that the episode? I that was the, that was the comedy episode that you showed me. Are you talking about the restaurant where they're all stuck in the toilet? And yes. they're like, nobody has toilet paper? Yes. <laughs> I yeah. love this episode. <laughs> pulls out the bill. Oh, oh. That yeah, he was pulls funny. out the picture. He what? pulls out the picture. It's like, no, I gotta, I have to. <laughs> that was to, the to me. Guy, like, the I, I, I just scroll. from what little I was able to see of Gintama. I just, I generally felt like it worked more as a comedy than something serious. It's a great show. Just skip the it's first two episodes; show. they don't matter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, I think so. Are we putting him in A or S? I think he's an A. It just I'd like say he's I, an a. I, like the whole conceit of like seeing a character who sort of like gave up on the fight, you sort so to speak, in their past, and it's like just sort of now with this more like calm place in their lives where they're just like going with whatever it is, sort of accepting the fate of the world around them. I just think it's like a really cool conceit for a character. And they always always liked his energy. And again, Sukida is incredible in the role. All right. Well, that's yeah. our list. Uh, we have ranked all 16 of these characters that we came up with. Um, poor Kazuma. <laughs> poor Kazuma. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, definitely let us know down below what you think of our list, where you would put these characters. Tell us what your top five anime protagonists of all time are. It's down below. You can do it. You can do it. In the it. comments. In the comments Believe below. Um, and also, uh, you know, feel free to give us a like if you like what you see. Subscribe if you want to see more. Um, but with that, I want to thank everyone out there for dropping in uh, to watch us do this. This is actually something that we might do more often um, with uh, obviously other like concepts like, you know, antagonist or villains, OPs, soundtracks things like that, where we independently create these lists of top fives and then come together to rank them as a group. Um, so let us know also if you like this and you want to see more because um, this was fun. I enjoyed this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but also check down below for links where you can find Anime Club After Dark on uh, Discord or uh, Twitter. Um, we have lots of fun events and stuff going on, on our Discord server all the time. We also have a merch store down there where you can buy all kinds of mugs and stickers and T-shirts, or you can buy a nice little notebook like this with our mascot on it. Oh, <laughs> it's a fan book. book. It's also got her autograph on the back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fancy schmancy. Fancy. <laughs> uh, but with that, I have been your host, Alex, and I will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Fucking the most enthusiastic good night ever. <laughs> Fucking no. Chinoda re re remaking his list for us. Not accepting the overlap. Do you no. know what he you know what he told me though? He said give a shout out to Thorfinn. Oops, I forgot. <laughs> oh whoops. <laughs> Thorfinn's a great protagonist. I, I will say the only reason I didn't add him is because I, the story's not over. Yeah, he could <laughs> to totally take a 180 and be a, become a terrible character. But from what I've seen so far, it's pretty good. Anyway, fuck you, Chinoda, for not being here. <laughs> Damn. Bye. Bye.